Hi guys, it's Elliot from Tutorialize.net and welcome to the 7th tutorial in my programming 2D Pong with the LWJGL3 tutorial series. In this tutorial we will be creating the basic structure of our paddle and ball class and also creating a level class which will primar primarily deal with updating our objects and rendering our objects all in one call. This is beneficial as it basically allows us to declare one level object at the top of our driver class and then call do one call level.draw and level.update and it basically keeps our main game loop nice and clean and simple. So just bit, just quickly before we start working on our paddle and ball classes I want to make a few minor changes to the code and the first one is going to be right in this render function here. I want you to set the values of the RGB values to 0.39F, 0.58F and 0.92F and that basically gives us a nice cornflower blue background when we compile that. Okay, the other change I want to make is if we go into the vertex array object class, um, I want you to declare a private int at the top called VAO ID. I then want you to, instead of having int VAO equals glgen vertex arrays in our create array object class uh, function, I want you to have this newly instantiated variable equal to gl gen vertex arrays just down here and then lastly I want you to have to create a new function um, called public and get VAO ID and this will just be a getter for our ID and this will help us to get rid of the int VAO ID here and we can basically just set it here um, by calling this new getter method okay so if I've forgotten any other minor tweaks that I've done, then feel free to compare your code to the GitHub GitHub repo that contains the most recent version of the code. And I'll leave a link for this down in the description of the video. Okay, so now we'll move on to the Paddle class. And basically we're going to want to go into Game Engine Package and right click on that and create a new class. And it's going to be called Paddle. Nice and straightforward. Um, this class is then going to extend our Game Object class. and this is good as it allows us to follow the dry programming principle which is don't repeat yourself. So just up at the top we're going to want to create a private vertex array object and called VAO and this will basically store all the information required for our paddle object on the screen and um, so vertices and everything we've gone over in the previous few tutorials. So next thing we're going to want to do is um, create our float array of vertices and our byte array of indices. So just to get started, float vertices and this is nice and simple, so 0 0.0, 0 0.25, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then the indices, just the same as we had before in our game object class. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3 and then 0. And we can pretty much delete this from our game object class as we no longer need this. Okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is create our constructor. So public paddle um, this dot count equals indices dot length and you'll notice that we've declared this already here so we can delete that line and we can just steal this from the old game object class and then remove that okay so that's all we need for the paddle class um, Next what we're going to want to do is create a public update method, so public void update and I'm going to say if keyboard input dot is key down glfw key w for the w key we're going to change the position equal to position dot y plus equals 0.01f okay and you notice this we haven't declared this yet so we're going to come back up to the top and declare 
public. Right, so our 3F position. And we're also going to import the appropriate um, GLFW class so we can use the key identifiers. So public static org dot lwjgl dot glfw dot glfw dot star. Okay. And again import our vector 3f class. So just so we don't get any null pointer errors, this dot position equals new vector 3f. Okay, and we're gonna also set if keyboard input dot is key down glfw key s position dot y negative equals zero point zero one f. Okay, so that was nice and simple. And the next thing we're gonna to want to do is create our level class and same again, we're going to go right click graphic game engine new class and we're going to call this level. So public level for our constructor and we're going to want two paddles, so paddle player one and paddle player two and in our constructor we're going to want to initialize these, so player one was new paddle. Okay, and again we're going to want to create public void update player one dot update and player two dot update. And then we're going to want to call draw public void draw. So player one dot draw and player two dot draw. Now until we've actually implemented our shaders, there's no actual way for us to move our player two to a different part of the screen. So we're just gonna have these in comments right now until such times as we can use them. So already you should see the benefits of having everything like this contained in the one level class. Basically every game object will be handled within this one class and it basically makes our organization a lot cleaner. So we take out our game object here and right in the driver class we're going to create a new level. So level level one equals actually import that and just down here level one equals new level. Okay, so call the draw and we'll call the update. Okay, so see if we start try render that, you should see the small paddle shape that we defined in the vertices array here. Okay. Okay, so now that we've created our level and paddle class, we're also going to want to create a ball class. So right click on game engine, new class, and we're going to call it ball. And it's going to be almost exactly the same as our paddle class, where it extends game object. And public ball as our constructor, public update, and public. Um, public void update, sorry. And that's all we need. Okay, so we're going to put this over here. Open up the ball. And we can pretty much copy and paste all this code in. And again, we're going to copy and paste the BAO and position and vertices. Okay. And we're going to leave the an update function blank right now because we can't yet um, move the ball around the screen so there's no point having that yet. Okay, so back into our level class ball ball one equals new I'll keep it consistent ball one equals new ball 
all one dot update and ball one dot draw. Okay. But instead of having the same vertices as we did in the paddle class, we're gonna actually change this to 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. So if you go into our level class and take out the player one dot draw kill, you should be able to see our new ball object. You notice that it's slightly off and that's because the aspect ratio of the window follows with its height and width and we can actually set that further down the line and make it look better. But for now, that'll do. Okay, so that's all for this tutorial. In the next one, we shall be dealing with creating our shader classes and some basic shaders that will actually allow us to move our paddles and balls around the screen. So if you found this tutorial useful at all then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more LWJGL3 tutorials. Cheers.